Hi friends, welcome back. Today we are going to continue reading from Space Mice Rescue Rebellion, Chapter 16, A Speck of Moss Dust. Thea and I floated on either side of the comet ready to launch the space net. We're um, almost there, Jer, Thea said. I'll throw the net around the comet and you'll have to tighten it. Zap! Suddenly, sparks shot out of the comet. One of them hit Thea and she dropped the net. I was able to retrieve it quickly, but Thea wasn't responding. She had fainted. I shook her and shook her and shook her until she came to. Would you please stop shaking me like a cream cheese milkshake? She said in a wobbly voice. I breathed a deep sigh of relief. I'm so glad you're okay, I replied. You gave me a real galactic fright. I'm okay, except my paws feel a little numb, she admitted. I must have gotten too close to the comet and been hit by the sparks. We have to take you right back to Mouse Star 1. I told her, no, Thea said firmly. We don't have time. You must get the net on the comet quickly. Otherwise, everything we've done so far is for nothing. Come on, I sighed. <sighs> I knew my sister was right, but would I be able to do it myself? I thought again of Bugsy Wugsy and Benjamin and of Reginald's big worried eyes. There was no question about it. We, it was up to me to save the planet. I couldn't possibly let the space mice or the cosmosaurs down. So I picked up the space net once more, shook it out and tried to center it on the comet. But I lost my equilibrium and began rolling around again. Be strong, Chur, Thea said encouragingly. You can still do it. She was right. I could do it. I managed to stop spinning. Then I gathered all my strength and picked up the space net. Suddenly, what looked like a tiny speck of Jurassic moss dust flo floated in front of me and landed on my nose. I felt the usual itch. Oh no, 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 no. I squeaked. No, 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 not now, achoo! The sneeze made me lose my balance again. I started rolling head over tail. When I regained control, I couldn't believe my eyes. The comet was perfectly wrapped and harnessed inside the space net. You rock, Jer, the exclaimed. That was perfectly executed. Now, let's get back to the space shuttle. We have a comet to tow away from Jurassic's. I took Thea's arm. Then we followed the safety cable all the way back to Mouse Star 1. Chapter 17 Engines on, full speed ahead. When our paws were firmly planted back on Mouse Star 1, we were greeted with a big cheer. But the mission wasn't complete yet. We still had to tow away the comet from Jurassic's. Space mice, to your posts, I ordered. There is no time to lose. Engines on, full speed ahead. The display signaled that we had exactly 4 minutes and 52 seconds before the comet crashed into Jurassic's. Roger that, Captain, Thea replied. Then she revved up the engines to full speed. We looked out the window and saw that the net was stretching. Would it hold? What if the comet was too heavy for the mouse star one to move? What if the professor made a mistake in his calculations? What if? Suddenly, 
the ship began to inch forward. But Professor Greenfer was worried. The engines are working too hard, he said anxiously. The comet is too heavy. Tia, give it more power, I shouted. Black holy galaxies. Everything began to tremble. I held on tightly to my seat so I wouldn't roll to the floor. The comet was now very, very close to Jurassic's. The countdown clock showed just one minute remaining before impact, then 50 seconds, 40, 30, 20, 10. Mouse Star 1 suddenly accelerated, pulling the comet along with it. Then the comet began to spin. At that point, we released the space net. The comet moved away from us like an enormous top, whirling wild, wildly towards the asteroid Solitarius. In a few minutes, the comet will hit Solitarius, Professor Greenfer announced. Come look. We all held our breath as we looked out the window, waiting for the comet and the asteroid to collide. Boom! A golden cloud of space dust arose from the collision as thousands of sparks streaked across space. Wow, what a show! It was like as we were watching an exhibition of interplanetary fireworks. Uncle G, this is even better than a 5D Mega Mouse horrific movie, isn't it? Benjamin whispered as he hugged me tightly. It sure is, I answered my little nephew with a smile. I had already forgotten that this entire adventure had started just one day ago at the movie theater. So much had happened since then. And it seemed that an entire lunar century had gone by. But most important, we had accomplished our goal. Jurassic was finally safe. We'll stop there for today and continue reading tomorrow and the following days. Thanks for reading with me. See you next time.